Welcome to the Red Bay Tiger Football Coaches Show with Tigers head coach Heath Childers and your host, Jack Ivey. Hello again and welcome into the Red Bay High School Football Coaches Show. I'm Jack Ivey. I've got Coach Heath Childers to be joining us. This will be our last Coaches Show of this 2022 season. And I want to say how much we appreciate Congressman Robert Adderholt, John Cook at Alpha Insurance, and also Brad Bolton and all the staff at Community Spirit Bank for making our coaches show possible. A big shout out once again to John Cook that uh, took care of us on our instant replays and throughout the season and also once again Community Spirit Bank on our first downs. And if you're just joining us on the broadcast, appreciate you being with us today. Uh, of course, I told you this will be the last coaches show of the 2022 season. And of course, we look forward to being back here again next year with the Coach Heath Childers and the Red Bay Tigers and a tough loss against their ball club from uh, Fife, Alabama. They're a pretty well-oiled machine. They win the ball game 55-8 to over the Red Bay Tigers. We're going to bring him in right now, the head coach for the Red Bay Tigers, Coach Heath Childers. Coach, good to see you. Good to see you, Jack. Well, uh, Coach, uh, I was thinking, now how in the world can we go to Fife and get a win? This uh, team has only won, like, what, five state championships and what, eight years or so, something like that. So uh, and we knew there was a great team going in, and I don't know exactly what the game plan is, but uh, if you remember, if you watched the game or if you was there Friday night, the Tigers uh, took the ball, and we ran off, what, eight minutes or so off the clock? So if you keep the ball away from them, they can't score, and that's exactly what you did earlier. I know the outcome uh, didn't come out the way we wanted, but uh, if you had a game plan, that had to be a, a part of it right there, right? Yeah, you know, we wanted to control the clock, uh, take take as much time off as we could, uh, keep their offense off the field, and we, we did that with our first drive, the, and, and that was great. The problem was we didn't do it with any of our other drives. So, right. uh, you know, you can't, you can't go three plays and punt to five. If you do that, they're going to get the ball and they're going to score. So, I mean, uh, now that's probably the first time I've ever seen eight minutes run off the clock and we didn't get – past the 50 so how in the world did you run that much time off in a short period of well time? actually our special teams helped us they put us in the hole i think our drive started on a three yard right. line so we actually ended up with like a 45 yard drive right we didn't cross the 50 but you know that, that that's a bit of an anomaly i mean you don't you don't see eight minutes off a clock and somebody not cross midfield so uh you know i i you know i guess that's something to talk about but uh you know at the end of the day you know they five you know, they beat us. They were a better football team. They just right out, they straight up beat us. Coach, uh, the fans for Red Bay came out in some really nice numbers to, uh, to make a long trip over there. And, of course, we we look at it, the broadcast crew, we look at it as, is that going to be a one-mile trip or a one-mill trip or a two-mill trip? And going to Fife is a two-mill trip. Absolutely. It's a two-mill uh, trip. So we eat at Cracker Barrel in Huntsville. Mm -hmm. And then we went and set up and we went to a Mexican place there. We, had, we got two meals in before the game started. That's pretty good. So you got, you got to do that. So we had a good time, and we've had a great time covering the Red Bay Tigers this year, Coach. And I want to say hats off to you and your coaching staff and all the players, the band, the cheerleaders. Uh, Y'all have made it a lot of fun this year, and uh, we won a lot of ball games. And you said it in the postgame show uh, a little bit. Uh, you did see a lot of improvement out of this team this year over the year before. Yes, no doubt. I mean, you know, we were a better football team this year than we were last year. Uh, a lot of that's due to the kids and how hard they've worked and uh, just how much they've bought into into the program and what we're wanting to do. So, uh, uh, definitely a lot of improvement. Coach, I didn't uh, put together a lot of highlights, but I did want to show the folks that first drive. Uh, well, Jack, a 55 day, they, you know, that's, you really. You know, I'm sure it gets pretty tough to put some highlights I worked, out there. I worked extra hard for that. But, you know, we did get the touchdown drive a little bit later. But, uh, uh, of course, going into the game, Coach, let's talk about Gage Edgman. He, wasn't, he was unable to go because of an injury. And, yes. of course, you had to put old Holden in a tough situation. You really need him out there at that receiver slot, but you had to put him at quarterback. Yes. Let's talk about Gage and give us an update on him. Uh, you know, he, he ran the ball the – against Phil Campbell, had a good run against Phil Campbell and uh, took a hard lick and, uh, you know, precautionary doctors and people, you know, decided it would be best if he set out, so. No need in taking a chance, right? No need in taking a chance. No need in taking a chance. So, Gage, we hope you are feeling better and is he expected to be able to full recovery on that? Just Yes, just I, needed, it's uh, expected a full recovery. Sounds good. 
Coach Heath Childers, I'm Jack Ivey. Once again, thanks to uh, Alpha Insurance, Mr. John Cook, Congressman Robert Anderhout, and also Brad Bolton and all the folks at Community Spirit Bank, of course, for making this Coach's Show possible. And we're going to go to those highlights. And uh, Coach mentioned uh, about us starting off in the hole. Uh, we'll show you that in a minute as the captains were out at midfield there. Coach, what is the rule? Uh, if you bobble the ball and it goes in the end zone, you actually can go back and down the ball, right? You don't ha actually have to bring it out, or do you have to bring it out? Oh, uh, you need you got to bring it out after you, if you've touched it and it goes in there. Yes. You've got to bring it out, so you yes. can't just down it. Coach, it couldn't uh, except for it being windy, and uh, of course that didn't affect didn't affect either team too much. Uh, no, it, no, nobody was really airing it out a whole lot Friday night. Very windy in the ball game, but it was a. Perfect night, especially in November, to be watching a ball game. I've I've been to Fife in different places this deep in the uh, late in the season, and uh, could get pretty cold, but not the way Friday night. So, this game, of course, was broadcast on the NFHS network, and of course, a live audio on Facebook. And I want to say how much we appreciate our wonderful sponsors that made these games possible all season long. You sporting out some new uniforms, and we opened them up for. Here's what we talked about. The ball gets uh, bobbled a little bit there. Goes that has in. to be brought back out. I don't know who said it didn't, but it does. It does have to be. A, we did, we was, we talked about it and didn't know 100% for sure on it. So uh, he did a good job to get it to the eight-yard line. He did. It? He did. He actually got a little further than what I thought he did. Uh, Somebody was asking me, uh, how many yards did Brady like uh, getting a 2,000? Was uh, about 60. So he's so he ended up about 60 short of 2,000 yes. for the season. So what an outstanding year, right? I mean, yes, uh, you know, 1,900 yards, 26 touchdowns. That's that's going to be hard to replace. You know, it's just a great catch there by Brady Bolton there on the sideline. We couldn't use our instant replay Friday night because it was on the NFHS network and it doesn't have the instant replay. I would have liked to have shown that again. You know me, I would like to have shown it three times, right? Yes, I mean, it was a... You know, they, you know, not a bad first drive there. I mean, we, you know, Fife has a really good defense. Uh, they're probably even better defensively than they are offensively. Coach, I'm not for sure exactly where we're at in the play right here, but we did go for it on a fourth down. We did. I think it's, you know, coming up here pretty quick. Fourth and two, yeah, we'll, we'll go for it here. I forgot I got my little downs on there so you can actually. Actually see it. Everything extra takes extra people, you know what I'm talking about? It's kind of hard to keep up with the ball game and the downs and the clock and everything else, and which I... And that was a good run by Keaton Lamphere there. Pick that up the that first. was the fourth down, right? Yes, sir. Both teams packing it in tight here. You're watching the Red Bay High School Football Coaches Show brought to you by Congressman Robert Adderholt, Community Spirit Bank, and also Alpha Insurance, John Cook. Now we had an opportunity there and, you know, just didn't have enough time to throw the ball. Coach, we had another fourth down. Did you think about going here? On I this thought one? about it and, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. If I had to do over again, we'd go for it there. That's a good pump by Reed Hamilton, you know. Good job by him. Good job by Keaton Lanfear right there coming up and making a good solid tackle.
They're running back. Good job there, just cutting that one back yeah, in. I mean, we we got line. We got a little confused about our alignment. Got lined up a little late and wasn't able to contain that. And that's one reason why he got to the edge. And then after that, you know, he just he made a good run. You know, we we had some guys Friday night that did a good job of tackling. We had other guys that did not have a good night tackling. And you know, you you got to have eleven guys doing well in tackling right. if you're going to stop five. Josh was told me he said I was lost the whole time on this play. He said he didn't know, he didn't know who had the ball, but the guy out front had it, and he got into the end zone for the touchdown. And Fife jumps out to a six nothing lead. They had trouble on their uh, extra points. They did. They struggled with that all night, but uh, uh, I think they rolled in four different kickers, which is I guess that's I don't know if that's good or bad. I mean, right. it'd be. It'd be nice to have four guys you believe that can kick a ball. Oh, that's right. But of course, the Red Bay Tiger Band performed, did an outstanding job uh, over at Five Friday night. And I want to say hand, hands off to Mr. Kirk and the band. And of course, Miss Hester and the cheerleaders uh, for going over and, and uh, doing a good job representing the Red Bay Tigers. And uh, Coach, uh, when we get through with the highlights here, I want to uh, recognize our seniors uh, one more time as they played their last game as a Red Bay Tiger and and uh, band members, you know, getting to play the last. I know they do some other performances, but their last football game, cheerleaders' last football game, and uh, I think sometimes it's more sad for the mamas than it is the kiddos when they say they're doing their last game, but. Uh, do you remember playing your last game in high school? Oh, it's been too long ago. It's been a, it's been a while ago. I I believe my last my last football game was at T.W. Martin in Jasper. Um, I don't even think they have a school anymore. I think after we beat them, they just shut the school down. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Once again, Congressman Robert Iderholt, thank you so much for making the Coaches Show possible. And uh, also Brad Bolton and all the folks at Community Spirit Bank and also John Cook at Alpha Insurance. And uh, Coach, uh, they've scored right here, and, I, and I'm trying to see what the score it's is. It's 48 to nothing. 48 to nothing at this point right here. And uh, we can see we were in the fourth quarter, and the – Tigers put a nice little drive together right here, and we're going to show that last drive right here. They had a lot of wind behind them in this second half right here, and of course that the guy kicked them pretty deep anyway, so mm -hmm. they put it in the end zone. So that's a pretty good weapon right there, isn't it, Coach? But they were off sides. They were. So they move it back. To the 35 and you know Carnes had a couple of good returns here in the second half I mean it's which that was an illegal block there by one of our guys I mean you you can't cut somebody when you're blocking on kickoff but I'll give them an A for effort at least at least they were trying to block yeah. what, a, what an outstanding season uh, for this young man here we just, you know, it's just your basic influence trout. One good thing about the new uniforms that uh, we were able to break out was. Uh, as the Tigers scampered on into the end zone, and you see the red touchdown pop up there, is uh, everybody had their right numbers. They did. They did. You know. So that was a, that was a positive. Y'all got the schedule worked out for next year yet? Mm hmm. You know, it's going to be the same schedule we had this past year if things just flipped.
Tiger's going to go for the two-point conversion right here. And we'll get across the line there for the two-point conversion. And uh, Fife did go on and get another score, and uh, they ended up winning at 55-8 to eight as the game comes to a close down in Fife, Alabama on this past Friday night. So we'll take her back in here and uh, talk about the coaches show. Once again, Coach, our season coming to a close and uh, uh, look back on the season and uh, reflect a little bit on this year for the folks. Well, you know, I mean, we we had a good start to the season. Kids played hard. They worked hard in the off season, and we, we were able to get some wins uh, this year. Uh, I think we tripled our win total. Uh, which is always a positive when you know we're plus four from last year. So and we were able to get back in the playoffs. Uh, we let probably a couple of games get away, slip away from us that we shouldn't have. Uh, but that's part of the growing and learning process, you know. Uh, and uh, we're we're getting ready for next season. Learn how to win those games instead of. I, I thought we probably uh, maybe should have beat Faultful and and had the, naturally had the chance to beat uh, Phil Camel. Uh, trying to think of another game that maybe we. Those those are two games, you know, and it's not a knock against those teams. There, Faultful and Phil Camel's coaches did a good job, and they were able to get the win. But you know, in hindsight, there's no doubt we should have won those get ball games. In my opinion. Right. What about our seniors uh, going out? Uh, I know you want to. Say hats off. I always like to recognize our seniors. I know we did on senior night, but on the coaches show. You know, we got, you know, John Schatz, uh, Brady Harden, and Caden Keaton, and there's only three of them, but they're going to, they're, they're, you know, they're living big shoes to fill. You know, Brady, 1,900 yards, 26 touchdowns this year. Uh, John, you know, one of the key components in, in Brady's success. He's one of those linemen up front helping open up, open up holes. Uh, John's just, and he did. A, John did a tremendous job on defense as well. So uh, losing Brady and John, then you know Caden Keaton, a first-year player in varsity, did an outstanding job at safety for us this year. Uh, it really, come on toward the end of the season, we missed him Friday night. He was out with the flu, so uh, that didn't help our cause going to five. But uh, you know the, these guys are, you know, they're they're special to me, and I, you know, I'm just glad that I was able to. Have, have the opportunity to coach them. Coach, uh, a lot of folks uh, may already know that, uh, of course, uh, Fred Bostick Jr. Memorial Stadium is about to go through a, uh, uh, a big change, and uh, we are going to uh, start to work really soon, hopefully, on this uh, turf in the field. Can you kind of give us an update on that? Yes, they uh, when they finish up with the softball field, the football field's next. They brought a bunch of equipment in yesterday uh, to get ready to get that started. Uh, it's going to, you know, they got to tear up the irrigation system and all that. It's kind of going to look like a bombs went off down there. But when they finish it up, it's going to look right. It's going it's to be something nice. It's, it's, it's a, you know, it's going to be it's something special for this school, community, and the football program. Ledbetter is wondering what kind of irrigation system will have to be put in for this turf. Well, I, that I don't know. I, I don't, and I don't, believe, I don't believe Ledbetter asked that. So You don't? Well, I'm no. still mad at you anyway. Yeah, well. You know what, folks, uh, he was supposed to have brought me, well, I, he never did answer me. I told him, I said, since we're doing the coaches show on Tuesday instead of Monday, and it being the last coaches show, you know, it'd be nice if I had a bacon, egg, and cheese this morning. Of course, uh, he acts like he forgot. Did you really forget, or did you just <laughs> not have time? I just didn't have time. Just didn't have time. So yeah. we are going to go I mean, after I mean, this. Why, why didn't you bring me a bacon, egg, and cheese? Well, I mean, I had to get here earlier than well, you this morning well, to get ready for the show and everything. Well, but uh, uh, I, I thought when I didn't respond that you would get the message. I did get the message. That's the reason I sent you one this morning and said I'm hungry mm -hmm. to remind you that uh, I am. So you could have went by mom's and uh, she, she would have probably sent me one. She probably would have. She probably would. So, you know, I... Uh, you know, a lot of folks uh, really get behind these uh, schools and get behind the teams and all that stuff. And, you know, to head off to Fife, Alabama on a Friday night, it's a long haul over there. It is. The, the easy thing to do would say, man, let's just stay home and listen to Jack or watch it on the NFHS network. But that's not what, what our fans do here. They, they actually uh, get in the car and make those long trips. And uh, 
you know, even if you don't even stop, you're talking almost three hour uh, trip over there. And, uh, and I'm gonna say hats off to the fans that uh, came out in big numbers. Uh, wherever we went, they were there, right? They did. Uh, you know, the fan support here has been really, really good. What about your uh, touchdown club? Uh, they, these people, they're feeding the teams all the time, pre-game meals, post-game meals. They feed you on Wednesday. They do that, a tremendous job. That I don't mean, just happen by no, itself. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You know, uh, as far as the support here in this community for this football program, it, it's outstanding. I, I couldn't ask for anything more. Coach, I've seen like, hey, we're going to feed the team this, this, and this is what we're going to need. And immediately, I'll bring the drinks, I'll bring the chips, I'll bring this. You know, they just take the list down and complete the list and uh, and make it happen. And uh, and I'm going to say hats off to all those folks that were involved with that and the parents. And uh, what about your coaches? I know you want to recognize them. The, they worked hard this season as they well. They do. They, you know, you got Joe Joe Boyd, Taylor Hamilton. Jamie Purser, Kelby Hallmark, Adam Hester. I mean, you know, it, these guys just do a tremendous job. Jason Vincent, uh, you know, they, you know, a lot, some of these guys are volunteers. And, uh, you know, they, they do it because they love Red Bay football. So. Jason Bell decided to pig the Wiggly on the uh, Hatton game. You know, we uh, didn't have any electricity. Of course, we knew you got called. The electricity was out two years ago. And I called to see if they'd get it fixed, and of course they didn't have it fixed. So we carried a generator over there. So whatever it takes to get the broadcast on. But uh, I want to say thanks to Jason once again for. Uh, I said now I need a generator that's going to be easy to crank. With we, Scott going to be cranking it, so uh, it was one of them. Just we, pull yeah. it up and it crank. Well, Jason does a good job. He, you know, anytime we need something of that nature around, you know, he's he's Johnny on the spot. So. Uh, glad to have him around. I got another question uh, asked you here. You don't know I'm going to ask this one. All right, we're going to put down the new turf field. Has it been decided on what color the field is going to be? And promise me it's not going to be any Boise State blue or. Uh, none of that's been decided. Pretty sure it's not going to be blue. Right. Uh, you know, the, the the main thing you know is when as we get closer and, and and we get closer to actually putting the turf down. You know the. One thing that people have to keep in mind, just be thankful that you're getting turf. Amen. Just be thankful because there's not many 2 A schools in this state that has that. Right. So at the end of the day, you know, they ask me, Coach, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And I simply respond, I do not care. Just turf it. Turf it and make it look sharp? I'll, I'll be happy with whatever you do. What about any other... Uh are we going to get a, maybe a new clock or? That's in the works. That's in the works and stuff like that. Can I have a request? I'm doing this so it'll be on record. You need to just be thankful that we're getting something new, Jack. I do, uh, but I want, I got one request though. Can we move it around where I can see it in the press box? No, absolutely not. It can't? No. You know what I have to do, don't if you? If you keep asking that we'll move it somewhere where you for sure, move it behind the yeah, press box. Yeah, so, right? so you definitely won't be able to see it. Well, I know you didn't have anything. You know what I have to do to see how much time's on the clock? I have to. My Lord, you have to do that. I have to stick my head out the window to see the clock. That's, so that's why I don't tell the. That's, that, that's, that's hard. I, I'm sorry that you. But you'll, that's, that's you go, torture. you'll go to bat for me on that torture, right? So, yeah, I mean. But uh, see if you don't put in your request. You know, they can't be granted or even considered, right? So at least you'll consider getting it where I can see it, right? Well, no, I said absolutely not. Oh, said absolutely. <laughs> Keith, edit this and uh, take that answer out. So. <laughs> Coach, uh, in the game, uh, of course, uh, if you look at the total stats in the game, uh, they, yeah, were, they, they probably tell the story. They, they tell the story as far as I've looked down here on games and we had 400 yards rushing. That's that's. Uh, almost unheard of and that we did that you know more than once but uh, um, we got of course holding in we got the touchdown and Brady Harden got the two-point conversion uh, we had seven penalties the ball game and coach uh, if Keith's right right here we didn't have a turnover we didn't so you know that would be one of the things for well, a chance well that's win. a positive the, the main thing is the biggest positive we got out of that is seeing the gold standard in two-way football Right. And five is. There's not a close second. Uh, they're by far the best team that we have faced this year. There's not a close second to, to that. Right. Uh, so, you know, we know where we're at. 
and we know now what we need to work on, how far we've got to go. Sounds good. Brady Harden, once again, 24 carries in the game, had 113 yards and came up about 60 yards short of 2,000 yards rushing, you know. Big, big year for him. I mean, if somebody gets 1,000 yards, that's a, that's a milestone. And uh, if you average 100 yards a game or whatever, so this young man right here, almost 2,000 yards. So uh, hats off to the entire team. Coach, we appreciate you and the staff and, and uh, look forward to next year. Uh, I tell you what, these games go by in a hurry. It seems like we just started mm -hmm. and now it's over. So, uh, so that's going to wrap it up. You got any final parting words? That's it. We're going to go get that biscuit. No, I've, I've got to go teach class. So. Well, you can just, just leave the money for Yeah, it. just leave the money. Leave the money instead, yeah. right? This guy said, uh, I'm not really hungry right now, but just go ahead and give me the money or whatever yeah, so I can eat maybe, later. Maybe so. later. Coach, we enjoyed it. I want to say hats off to our superintendent, uh, Mr. Hamilton, and Casey Johnston, our school board member, uh, Mr. Nanny, and Ms. All, Burks. And, all, uh, all big supporters Dr. of the Parsons, football. Dr. Parsons, all the administration at Red Bay. Thank you all. And uh, you know what's pretty neat about Red Bay and other schools, I'm sure, too, but um, the coaches and all that stuff of all these other sports, they kind of, every, all y'all support each other. And we, stuff we, like we, that. we do, you know. Uh, Coach Tarisky, everybody knows what kind of job he does in basketball. I mean, he just does a phenomenal job. He, he's a big supporter. Uh, he and I talk a couple of times throughout the season about football. Uh, Coach Han, you know, he's at the games. He's, he's a big supporter of, of the football program. And, uh, you know, just in general, every, everybody supports each other, uh, and, and that's a good thing. Can I recognize one other person? I don't want to I, leave anybody. Brandy Miller. The AD, yes. The AD. King what? Duke couldn't, you know, we probably wouldn't even be able to get on the bus without her. I mean, she does a great job. She helps me, or basically, she does most of the eligibility stuff. Uh, she would probably get done probably a little bit faster if I would do my end of it. But uh, she's, she's just, she does a great job. Can't say enough about her. She's, she's been a lot of help this year and we love her and we appreciate her. Go to the Red Bay High School Facebook page and she keeps you up to date. She uh, sure does. Uh, if I'm streaming a ball game, she puts the link up there to make it a little easier for folks that uh, have a spot. If, I, if she wants to put, like the coaches show here when we get through, uh, I'll send her the link. She puts it on that website as well. She so, does a great job. Thank you, Miss Brandy. We appreciate the job you do. And uh, I'm going to say, uh, Coach, it's time to get out of here. Hey, good seeing you, Jack. Man, I appreciate you. Thank you for everything. And I uh, appreciate Keith on the controls. Uh, we get his mind working pretty good on Monday morning. Yeah, I, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll appreciate all that Keith does. We're doing the coaches show today. It's on a Tuesday. I had to be out of town yesterday for a doctor's appointment, but uh, – so if you was wondering where the coach's show is, we didn't forget you. So uh, for Coach and Keith, I'm Jack Ivey saying thank you for joining us. Hopefully you'll enjoy the coach's show. Make sure you share it with your friends so they can enjoy the broadcast as well. And we'll see you next year for Red Bay Tiger football. Y'all have a good one. You've been watching the Red Bay Tiger coach's show with head coach Heath Childers and your host, Jack Ivey.